Now, before we start, I forgot to mention in the last video that I have supplied all of the course files for this series. You can find them on my GitHub page, Object Oriented JS, and the link is going to be down below for that. So if you want to see the code for lesson five, for example, make sure you go to this branch drop down and select lesson five, first of all. Then if you click on one of these links, you'll see the code for that lesson. OK, now, before we start writing any code, I just want to explain, I've got an index file right here, very simple, just a couple of simple styles, h1, and I've linked up to this script right here, objects.js. Now, there's a load of code here at the minute, but don't worry about this. First of all, I just want you to look at this. What we're doing is making many, many different variables to store different user information. We've got user one email, user one name, user one friends, user two email, user two name, etc. right down for user three as well. So we're creating all of these different variables for these different users. And we also have these functions down here for logging in, logging out, logging friends. Now, if we were to continue coding like this, then pretty soon we'd have what's known as spaghetti code, where everything's kind of all over the place and nothing's centralized or contained together. Now, that is going to be really unmanageable and untidy at some point. And instead, what we could do is group a user all of its properties and all of its functionality into one variable, into an object. So let's do this. Let's get rid of all this junk right here. And let's start by creating an object instead to store all of this information about a user. So the first thing we need to do is create a variable to store this object in. We'll call it user one. And we need to create an object literal. So the way we create an object this way is by opening and closing our curly braces. So this right here at the minute is just an empty object, right? So inside here, what we can do is add different properties and different methods to this object. What does it mean to be a user? What different properties does it have and what functionality does it have? So first of all, we want to store a property called email. That's going to be the user's email. So we can just create that property right here, email, and we'll set that to Ryu at ninjas.com. OK, what else do we want to store about the user? Well, the user's name. So we can store that as well, which will be Ryu. So what we're doing here is called encapsulation. But what does that mean? We're capturing everything to do with the user here, and we're containing it all together in one piece, one object. We're encapsulating what it means to be this user inside an object. And now any kind of properties and methods that describe what it is to be a user, this user will live inside this object. So the literal meaning of encapsulation is to enclose a mixture of something inside a capsule. So you can think of this object right here. This is the capsule and the mixture is all of the different properties inside that capsule. That's essentially what encapsulation means. And it's good because now we're organizing our code in a much more logical way. We know that if we need anything to do with this user, it's going to be inside this one object instead of in multiple different variables, right? So let's try now logging one of these properties to the console to make sure this works. I'll say console.log user1.name. And if we save that, what I can do is go over here and right click and open with a live server. Now I can do that because in VS Code, I have this live server package installed. So you can install that as well. But I've already done that and here it is over here. So now we can see Ryu is logged to the console. OK, so that works. Now we also saw in that other code, that spaghetti code, that we had a login function and a logout function. So let's add those in as well. If we want to add any kind of methods, any kind of functionality, to this object we can do. We can come down here, we can give this a name, so I could say login, and we could set that equal to a function which does something. Now, this way of writing it is absolutely fine, but what I'm gonna do is just shorten this thanks to an addition by ES6. So now if we have a function inside an object, we don't have to write out the function keyword, we can just come over here and say login, like so, and this is the function, right? So now what's this gonna do? Well, this is just gonna log the email to the console and say has logged in. So I can say console.log and then this dot email and this right here, this refers to this thing right here, the object. In different places in your file, the keyword this has different meanings. When it's in an object like this, 
this refers to the object. If it was outside of the object, this would refer to the window object, the global object, right? But when we're inside this object, this refers to this actual object. So I can say this.email because email is a property of this object. Make sense? Okay, so this.email and then we'll also output has logged in. Now we'll do another method called logout. And this time we'll say console.log this.email and then has logged out instead of logged in. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna run this file, view it in a browser. And first of all, we'll say user one. Let's see what's in this object. Now, if we open it up, we can see we have these different properties, email and name, but we also now have these two methods, login and log out. So let's try using one of them. We'll say user one dot login. And now it says Ryu at ninjas.com has logged in. Cool, so this is working. User one dot log out. And that's working as well. So there we go. That's how we can make an object literal, a simple object by using these curly braces like this. And we're storing everything it means to be user one inside this object. The email property, the name property, and the login and the logout methods as well. So now we have this object in place in the next video, I wanna take it one step further and look at how we can actually update the values of these different properties and access them from outside the object itself.